building work literally everywhere unbelievable they're doing some pipe replacements inside a house we've had some issues with well what looked like kind of debris and sand in our drinking water and it's done it, it never was it was never like that we, we don't drink the water from the pipe we have one of those water filters that you fill up and it sits in the fridge and it filters the water and it tastes very nice what comes out so it's kind of bottled water quality look at that more building work unbelievable there's literally so much building work. this whole road very cool and so they're replacing that because i don't know somebody's noticed and it got worse over the years turns out i guess the pipes that deliver water to and from a building are made of metal and they are a little bit uh, well broken and corroded and all that so perhaps it wasn't exactly sand maybe it was more something like i don't know iron dust particles whatnot anyway so it's being replaced our water's off for two days between nine and five so no use of the toilets no drinking water no making coffee uh, crazy stuff so anyway i'm working today so it's not a not a big issue there but that road they're literally like three or four building sites one after the other miami beach is a complete construction site you know i chose this route today because these trees sadly they've already been cut so literally two days ago they were all very long and those would have been amazing shots uh, looking at the trees me going through it what a shame didn't quite work out that way so one of those things but uh, still i'm a little bit late to work i've got more building work my goodness unbelievable crazy stop with the building work already yeah? it's one of those things so i've got some exciting news there it's on several levels so on one hand the big news is that i have just finished narrating brian's book brian kramer's Flickr world it's very exciting so we've that is finished much uh, faster than i had anticipated it to finish we had thought well let's give it three four five months six months something like that and see if uh, if we get it done before christmas or this year that was the plan and it's started work beginning of june and now it's the end of july and it's it's finished it's in the can it's it's narrated and it's edited as well and now we we've both kept an ear in ear technically on the on like the chapter by chapter thing but it's a very different dynamic if you listen to the whole thing in one swoop so both brian and i want to listen to this for the next week or so and just listen to this in one go and see if the connections from one chapter to another flow all right i'd like to do that because uh, it just takes on a very different dynamic if you listen to the whole thing as one as one big chunk i remember when i narrated my first book the one that i wrote the broken bowels it sounded like chapter by chapter everything looked fine or sounded fine but then when i listened back at it as the audience would it sounded very it's it didn't it didn't sound right and i made several adjustments there and I, maybe that was just me getting into the whole narrating a book type dynamic so i did it much too fast when i started it so now i did it much slower i guess from the from the get-go and settled into a much better rhythm because sometimes if you're getting caught up with editing then you see so many pauses and it's you're inclined to take them out but when the audience hears this for the first time they do need pauses to think about what's just been said and to digest things and to, it's a bit like the the gaps in the movie you don't have just dialogue after after the other you have to give the audience time to think about this and when we read that's kind of a natural process we sometimes put the book down and go hmm that's interesting i'll think about that for a second but then if we if we we don't do that when we listen the, the, or when we watch a movie we even though the, the remote control is there it is only very rarely that we grab it and pause and say hmm let me think about what just happened there and what i've noticed that when i narrated my first book for the first time it sounded more like a machine gun fire so it was all it was the performance was just too fast and so I, towards the second half of the book i got into this thing that i made it a bit slower and that was a much better experience as a listener so i went i went back and narrated the whole thing literally from from the start once again 
So I hope that's not going to be necessary with Flickr World because it sounds like it is there. But I've, now that we've gone to the end of the book, we do not remember what the first part, what the beginning of the book sounded. So it's good to come back to that and just listen to that again. And I'm very open to saying, hey, maybe uh, one chapter or part of a chapter could be done better. I'm, I'm always conscious of, of saying, hey, if we can make it better, let's make it better. It's not about when it gets finished or we're not under any time pressure here. We just want to deliver the best product that's possible and give the listener the best experience. It's amazing material. I love the book and I think it is worthy of just giving it that extra edge and making it as fantastic as the audio in the audio version as the written version already is. So that's number one. That's very exciting. So we're, we're, we're more or less done with the project. And hopefully when we listen back to it, it'll be, it'll be just as, as great as we, as we hope it is. We, we hope it, we, we imagine it will be for the, for the listener. So that's one thing, so that's, that's very exciting. The second thing that's happened is that about a week or so ago, I bought a new mouse and it is the most expensive mouse I have ever bought. I mean, literally I have ever since I've used computers, I have used the worst input devices for these beautiful machines that there are on the planet. It was always about the cheapest and that often comes with it being literally the worst. Well, not the worst, I mean, adequate, you know, except for the Mac. On the Mac, you don't really get to use cheap equipment. If you buy Mac hardware, it's always the best for a year. And then they bring out something else, which then is the best. And after five or six years, you, you tend to notice that, hey, this is now really old technology. Uh, but I digress, I digress. On the Mac, I always had a trackpad and that worked flawlessly. Magic trackpad, first edition. And it's the same trackpad that I use on my MacBook, which is now also from 2011, no longer supported by Blender 2.8. Crazy stuff, still works. And it's sturdy and it's got this amazing keyboard. I wouldn't want to have a typing experience without it really. So that is awesome. I always had that, but on Windows, and I guess that's my point here, on Windows, I always had very cheap, either the Microsoft mouse back in the day, or these days I use the Logitech mouse. And then the M325 series, sometimes the A, the M185. So cheap and cheerful. I didn't realize those are actually portable mice. I thought they classed them as full size because I've seen really tiny ones. I've got a Microsoft Wedge mouse that I bought with my Surface Pro first generation back in the day. And that is literally tiny. That's like the, the size of a matchbox almost. And if you, you know, it is a Bluetooth mouth for a long time. The only Bluetooth mouth that I ever had. And it's not, you know, it's, it's not great for, for literally anything. It's, it's great because it's tiny and it fits in your pocket. But anyway, so I always got around with, with these types of mice and for coding and all the rest of it, that's all fine. That's all, you know, you can, you can get by. But when you do 3D applications, it's, it really makes a difference if you have a mouse that doesn't quite react properly and it doesn't always translate the motion of your hand into the motion of the cursor on the screen. So that is, that is something I was painfully aware of and it's just it's not nice when you do when you do demos it's just awful when you go well we just go move the cursor over here to the top left top left i said top left oh man corner and it's just you know it's it's not it's not pleasant i say it's just not not very pleasant ah my chance to go over to the left awesome so i Julia needed a new mouse and new keyboard for her work because her keyboard is so noisy it interferes with me doing screen recordings basically and uh, it's we wanted to go and get her a new keyboard so in the keyboard mouse section at Best Buy we thought ah let me have a look what other mice are there because she's also thinking of perhaps getting a new mouse herself and it turns out that there was one which, the, which is the one that I bought it's a Logitech MX Master 2S or Master MX 2S, something like that. It's a, it's a big thing. There were two versions of it. There was a smaller one and a larger one. Retail price is about $100, which I didn't know at the time. I just thought, ah, if I do pick out a mouse that's good, maybe I should look for a different class 
of input devices just something that's just you know better like on a whole different level i don't want something that's cheaper but essentially the same thing as the one i already own i would like something that is more accurate and you know maybe connects via bluetooth rather than a unifying receiver just take gives me an extra usb port there and so on and so forth so i thought that is that is cool that's exactly what i need and played around with many and decided on that one well it turns out that they had a sale on and i didn't know this uh, it was 50 dollars instead of 100. the smaller variant of the of the mouse which is called the mx anywhere i believe that is the one that we, that we bought Julia yesterday. So upon the great feedback that I had with my MX Master 2S or whatever it's called, I said to Julia, wow, you need, if you want a new mouse, get one of these. So that's awesome. It connects via USB or Bluetooth. So you have a choice there. That's cool, depending on what your computer wants. But more importantly, it connects to more than one computer. It connects up to three computers and it includes Macs and Windows machines. So that is very exciting. We can literally go and connect it to both my Mac and my... Are you going? No, I'm going. Cool. Thank you. So I, could I can use it on my Windows computer on the left and on my Mac on the right, which is super awesome. So that really gives me that dual screen setup with two different computers. And the way this works is just absolutely incredible. You can say where your computers are in relation to one another. Much like you set up displays under Windows or under Mac OS, you just slide them next to one another. And you say, so this computer is my Mac, this is on the right, and my Windows computer is on the left. And as soon as you reach the, the, the kind of the border of the screen, it just seamlessly, or almost seamlessly, switches over to the next computer and connects on a different channel to different hardware. So that is phenomenal, absolutely incredible. So it's just a little piece of software that you install on the Windows machine and on the Mac machine. You can also use two Macs or two Windows machines, no problem there. And it works. And not only does the cursor just seamlessly go through the, to the next machine, it also lets you copy and paste from one operating system to the other, literally with the, with the built-in system dialogues. Very cool stuff text works for text works for urls works for images i haven't tried it with videos yet but works for images man more building work why can't i go and go oh maybe i can get through here can i get through here guys you are just ridiculous maybe not there we go and it's so funny sometimes i have a screenshot that i've made on the mac and i've got the upload dialog open on windows and i'm thinking well all i really need to do is copy and paste this thing over to the other machine but i'd have to upload it to dropbox or to creative cloud and then the thing doesn't sync and then you think oh maybe it's just easier if i just open the upload dialog on the other computer and no not anymore it's literally just copy on the mac paste on windows and it's just it's just there it is unbelievable now my next thing that i want to buy is a keyboard that works just like it i've seen one tragically 100 bucks 200 bucks sorry 200 bucks the logitech craft keyboard that is something i really need to try out regular keyboard good typing experience top left corner it has a little dial and it allows you to change values and things like photoshop and illustrator and stuff like that so you go into a text field and you just change the size whoops with with that little wheel there very cool they have an sdk Let's see if i can make that work with blender that'd be kind of cool write a little blender plugin that makes this dial on the logitech craft keyboard available in sort of input devices that'd be cool 200 bucks is a little too much so i really need to wait for a sale there and i'm not in a rush to buy that but inspired by this amazing mouse i'm thinking yeah my keyboard was also 15 dollars and it's okay but for typing it's just not it's just not great i'm used to my mac keyboard and that's really cool but i keep hitting the wrong keys and I, as a result i keep trying to not write stuff on windows or i use my mac keyboard on my windows machine it's all not ideal mac keyboard has the issue that it doesn't have a numpad so that's not good for all kinds of 3d applications but it's an awesome typing experience and it doesn't and on the mac keyboard if i use that on my windows machine it doesn't use the the media keys and there's all workarounds and compromises and i think i'm just going to go bite the bullet and buy myself a good keyboard uh, for once in my life like literally for the first time i'm investing in in good input peripherals for my computers i've been using computers for 
decades now and I've never ever had good input devices I just I just realized that you know yeah so anyway that that mouse is awesome and uh, I think this is this is the other point I was gonna make I wanted a mouse and the universe just gives me that surprising discount from hundred dollars down to 50 that is super awesome so inspired by that we went back yesterday and thought maybe we can buy Julia the same mouse even though her hands are smaller so for her the mouse is a little bit big and we realized hey that offer is no longer on so now the mouse is back to whatever 80 dollars or something so still not bad for what it does but uh, check it out the smaller version that used to be 80 dollars literally last week is now 50. so now it's almost like ah the universe is saying julia needs a mouse as well and here it is you get a discount as well dear that's that's just that's awesome i love it when that happens i really like it when that happens You know, you gotta appreciate these little things. You know, don't just say, oh great, okay, I gotta deal with it. You really gotta say, hey, wow, that is, I'm so appreciative about all these little miracles and wonders that life gives you sometimes.